If we are talking about headphones and my experience with headphones, I've tested dozens of them, like literally dozens of them. Like we're talking not only about some budget dynamic headphones, because simply I like to review budget things, but also like top of the line dynamics, like focal stelia, or even the most natural sounding planars like Hyphen and Sesvara, and also Eustats like Stax. But if we're talking about my end game, my headphone that I love to use, and I use them pretty much every single day and I would never sell it, is actually this one pair I have on my desk. And it's not that expensive and also I, don't like it for its musical experience, I like it because it's my workhorse and I use it with basically every single video I have to edit and every single audio I have to edit. And this is, of course, Bayer Dynamic DT1990. So if you would like to hear my review about it, because I've been using it for more than a year, then relax, sit in a comfy chair, get some popcorn, because that's probably gonna be a very long journey, mostly because I like to talk a lot. And also, I'm back! Before we gonna go to review of the T1990, I would like to explain myself why I haven't been here for uh, almost a year. And if you are only interested in DT1990 review, then you probably have some timetable like review starts here or something. People already started to do that in my comments because I like to off top a lot. So first up, what, what is this place? What, what is happening? So as you probably remember, I came from Germany. Then I did a review of KN3 Pro. That review was mostly positive, but the model was defective. And you probably thought that I got killed by KN or something. And no, not at all. It's just that uh, I was at my home and then I just left my home because I moved here uh, I changed my job I had plenty of job throughout the time also college so I had to study and literally I had no time to do any of this YouTube stuff so I simply wasn't doing that so uh, the thing is right now I'm back and I hope I'm back for good because uh, I would like to make this uh, channel a little bigger uh, because I would like to make stuff that will help people with uh, buying decisions and that's it and I would like to do this mostly because I would like to make myself like a international portfolio of what I can actually do so I want to do a review of tech stuff of audio stuff basically show like my sort of style if we're talking about video production that's why I would like to present one of the crucial items in terms of my video production which is my pair of headphones my endgame which is DT1990 so first up this review is not gonna be like your typical uh, let's unbox like the uh, review like all, all the cables and stuff no I'm gonna review this pair specifically because this pair has been bought used and I'm actually its third user so uh, there was like this guy and uh, my friend out uh, out buy this uh, pair of headphones from him because I wanted to buy it in the first place but I didn't have money because that was like a pretty hard time for me but, like pre-covid uh, so actually he bought it and then he was like, yeah, I'm gonna use it for like few months and when you'll get like your money Then uh, you cannot buy it from me. I'm like and I was like cool because this thing I, I remember he paid for like $320. It's a bargain for this uh, for this pair of headphones actually So yeah, uh, there was like the one guy that was using it then he was using it for more than a year because I didn't really have uh, any chance to get any uh, sort of money for it uh, so uh, when I actually got to Germany and started to work there, then uh, was the actual time when I could uh, get our money for, for him. And then after uh, coming back from Germany, I finally bought this pair. So I bought them specifically because I had work in mind and these are very great for this specific case scenario. So let's go through the specs. Uh, this thing has dynamic driver and that dynamic driver is called Tesla. And that driver is actually very special because uh, these headphones have impedance of 250 ohms. And if you're just starting with audio and you only know about dynamic headphones, then probably you'll, you'll also know that 
uh, everything that goes like above like 80 ohms or something needs like a special amp to even be able to uh, be driven properly. Of course, if we are going outside of the realm of dynamic headphones, we're going to planars, we're going to IEMs. Uh, this rule is uh, pretty much busted because uh, most of the time we have something uh, with impedance like 16 ohms, 24 ohms, and uh, if that rule was true, then we can surely drive them with phone properly, right? Well, no. <laughs> Susvara has like something like 40 ohms, as I remember, and you can only drive them with uh, speaker amps. So, uh, no. But in terms of dynamics, most of the time it's correct, but this pair, DT1990, is actually a pair that uh, does not go under that rule. Because you have 250 ohms of impedance, but uh, of course Bayer Dynamic knew if they are studio headphones, then mostly people will plug them to audio interfaces. And most of the time audio interfaces have good preamps for microphones, but uh, rather mediocre preamps for headphone outs. So they designed it to be relatively easy to drive. Like, we're not talking you can uh, drive them properly from a phone, but let's just say they're not gonna sound terrible out of the phone, and the more power you'll give them, then more detail and more clarity you're gonna get from these headphones specifically. And this is actually great because, for example, not always I would like to go with my like desktop amp and listen to my headphones properly, I would like to go check them on my laptop, I'm gonna check them on my phone to actually uh, check like the mix if, if it's fine, if voice recordings are fine on videos I'm making. And these are actually pretty great for this specifically. Specification also states these are open ear. Uh, I'm gonna uh, say they more like semi-open with almost no isolation. There's just a tiny bit of isolation and if you're gonna see like by the cup, uh, like the half of it is just seal and half of it is just grill. So I would say they are more semi-open, you just don't get uh, a lot of isolation out of it. And with this also comes that the sound stage is not the widest. And I can understand why it's not the widest, because this is supposed to be like studio headphones, not like your 10 by 10 meter uh, orchestral uh, room simulation or something like that. You're supposed to have like a relatively small scene to be able to pinpoint everything uh, when you actually want it to be. And if we were talking about detail, if we were talking about imaging and clarity, these things are just beasts. You can literally hear everything in those, even like the worst compression, uh, even like this, the, the faintest, tiniest breaths and vocals, but they are not enjoyable from like musical experience. You just hear them because you have to hear them because you have to work with those headphones. That's why I don't really feel like they are very good for musical experience because they just showing you everything and they have literally no sort of mercy to like low quality sounds. If something sounds uh, low quality, then it's gonna be low quality. Any sort of compression, if something was compressed to mono or, or something like that, you're gonna hear it with them specifically. Now let's talk about the sound, because what I was talking about right now is basically just performance. Uh, if we're talking about sound, they are pretty neutral with its uh, bare dynamic characteristic treble peak. So if you're talking about sub bass, bass and mid range, then we have literally a flat frequency response, which is great for studio and for mixing and mastering. If we're talking about treble, there are some peaks, and uh, just as I mentioned, this is basically a normal for the bare dynamic. And it, personally, I really love that frequency response. If we are talking about bass, there's not much of it because it's not bloaty, but it goes actually very, very low. I have to say about that. So uh, if you're gonna get like those very like bassy tracks, then they are not very bloaty. And uh, most of the time when they are when they are like mastered to be like bloaty as hell, uh, you just feel kind of like bored with it because you can't really feel that punch of a bass. But on the other hand, if it goes to like the lowest, lowest frequency response possible, you still can hear it, you can still enjoy it. So yeah, as stated before, a midrange is also pretty neutral, but it doesn't sound as natural because of this sound stage. So every time you put them on, even you have like this mastering that gives you like the widest frequency response possible and like the widest staging, 
you still have this feeling like you are listening to some sort of audio device. Like for example, you're the security guard that is watching CCTV monitors all the time and you're going to like a first camera because you see all the things that are supposed to be there and then you're going to the second camera, all is good, then you're going back to that first camera and suddenly something is gone. I don't know, maybe that thing that is gone is suddenly just coming to you to bite your head off because you're working at Fastburst Pizzeria. That sounded better in my head, I'm, I apologize for that. So yeah. <laughs> And now, after this terrible explanation, we are going to treble, which is, I think, the most controversial in this specific headphone. And that's not because of DT1990, but because of DT990. So every time where our people are like asking for like a very good pair, like a very analytical pair for 500 bucks, I'm like, just go get DT1990. And they're like, no, I'm not gonna get it because treble peak. I'm like, have you ever listened to it? No, but I've heard 990 and it was terrible. Okay, but that's a different headphone. So it's not like a younger brother of 990? No. This is, this is completely the opposite, I would say, of 990. This thing is actually listenable. And if you have a case that there's some kind of a vocal that is very sibilant, for example, uh, you're not gonna hear that on DT1990. I mean, unless it's like some extreme case and that is gonna sound very sibilant unless you're uh, wearing something like Audio Quest Nighthawk or something, where, which are very, very dark. And I gotta say, I personally love this treble so much because everything sounds so crisp and natural. A few months after buying DT1990, I wanted to get some close back pair of headphones that would assist DT1990 because I would like to do some piano practices on headphones. Uh, I would like to record some vocals and I don't want any sort of uh, sound bleed. So I have to go with some close backs. And when I was comparing like 12 different headphones, like we're talking Sony, Shure, Audio-Technica, AKG, or even Austrian Audio. When I was testing like all those headphones, I was going back and forth. Then I went for like Shure SRH 840. This was, this was like my top dog. And then I just spotted this one headphone. I, I was like, eh, probably I'm not gonna get it, but I would like to test it. And it turned out that I actually want to get it. And what was it? Well, obviously DT770. This is DT770 80 ohm, which means now I'm proper Bayer fanboy. What I need more is just uh, Zalento, uh, Bayer Dynamic, which is an IEM, and I'm gonna be like a proper Bayer Dynamic fanboy. Maybe that uh, desktop amplifier as well. But yeah, I really love uh, the sound response and sound frequency of the Bayer Dynamic because I really like that treble peak they have. That's why I have two pairs right now, which is one a workhorse and second one for, you know, close back stuff, isolating stuff and gaming. Uh, yeah, I really do like gaming on DT770 and to be honest, I'm thinking about testing Tiger as well. As mentioned before, this pair is used, so it has a significant wear and tear, and I'm not going to hide it because I would like to make a long-term review of those because this is a third user pair of headphones and they've been in use for like more than three years, maybe even four years, something like that. So as you can probably see, the cable is swapped for something else, like just the generic AliExpress cable because both of the cables just got ripped and they don't work properly. There's just a like a little bit of plastic that broke off, but outside of that, everything just works perfectly. There are no like meaningful scratches, no rattling in the driver, no squeaking or, or something. This is like a very well built pair of headphones. And what's even better, even if that plastic bit broke off, I'm just paying something like seven euros and I'm buying like directly from Bayer Dynamic this whole contraption and I can replace it if it annoys me because I got OCD or something. Pads, well, you have two pairs of pads. One of them is called analytical and second one is called balance. So analytical is the one you want to use if you want to use it for like a proper studio work because they give that neutral uh, frequency response to them. Uh, so if you would like to work in them, analytical pads, anal anal analytical pads, analytical pod, analytical pads, this is so hard to say, analytical pads uh, are the ones that gives you that uh, frequency response that is very neutral with that slight treble peak. So if you would like a kit for studio use for mixing and mastering this, is the pair of pads to go, but you also have balanced pads, which uh, TLDR just gives you a significant bass boost, and I've never tried balanced pads. 
That's because I don't want to like these headphones with balanced pads because these are my workhorse and I'm really afraid that if I'm gonna put balanced pads, then I'll just won't like them at all with analytical pads. That's why I've never did that and I don't know how these 1990 sounds with balanced pads. You gotta check other reviews for that. I literally don't want to try balanced pads because I'm afraid that I'm gonna like them. Yes. If we're talking about comfort, these are actually very comfortable. No sort of hot spots, no sort of pain after long session usage. These are great for very long term usage and the only issue is that uh, your ears can get hot after like a longer period of usage because you have these very cushy, very mushy pads that are actually holding around your ear. So uh, if you're doing something around summer or your room is just in general kind of hot, then your ears can get hot as well. So you have to keep that in mind. And also we have to talk about this socket, which is mini XLR socket. Uh, I have no problems with it. I only had problems with bare dynamic cables because they both broke. You just uh, had like the cold one and the standard one, both three meters and they both broke. So I just ordered this one from AliExpress. Uh, ain't the greatest, but uh, certainly looks better than this uh, typical, your standard cable uh, from like a generic manufacturer. So yeah, in summary, because this review was very chaotic, I don't even know how I'm gonna put a timetables here to make it any sort of reasonable. This thing, DT1990, is a pair that you would rather not get for musical experience unless your favorite musical experience is something very neutral and very analytical and overall your like critical listening to like the tiniest faintest details in your DSD tracks is your kind of thing, get these. Like these are actually great for this. If you would like to get some sort of like fun musical experience, like a very wide sound stage and overall like uh, some sort of pair of headphones that would add from itself so it would actually make your musical experience different than the actual mix is presented in the track. These are not these. These are not these. These are studio workhorses. They are supposed to give you like the greatest detail and they're supposed to be very honest with the source of the compression, with the low quality, with the high quality. They'll show you everything and that's what they're supposed to be used for. They're supposed to be used for work and also for being able to analyze your tracks instead to listen to them to get your musical experience unless you're critical listening masochist. And that's it. Next time we're gonna do something about this guy. I have at least five different episodes to do about iPad Pro because I would like to review a specific sections of this tablet, what's good about it and what's not good about it. So the first one probably is gonna be like graphic designing and drawing capabilities because for example, screen protectors can literally ruin your drawing capabilities of a tablet. But that's something we're gonna talk about next time. So I was Bitwolf, so you probably could see that because of this beautiful shirt I bought today because it's beautiful and has wolf on it. And I see you next time. Bye.